Interestingly, you know, we've had um, senators on both sides of our state line uh, targeting credit card companies. And on the surface, you know, it seems like, hey, a good idea, right? I mean, you know, protect the little guy. We understand that, you know, credit card debt is skyrocketing, unfortunately, because of the economic conditions um, of the country right now. But is it actually a win for you, the consumer? Um, I want to welcome on and say hello and good morning. To our next guest, Jackson Hadaway, president of the Missouri Bankers Association. You may have heard some of their ads um, really, I don't want to say targeting Senator Hawley, but at least questioning Senator Hawley and making sure that you, the Missouri resident, know what is potentially on the table in Washington, D.C. Jackson, good morning. Thanks for being here on KCMO. What is it on this most recent legislation you want to make sure that Missouri residents know about what Senator Hawley is considering in D.C.? Good morning, Pete. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate the opportunity to share with your listeners a little bit more about what sounds on the face, like you said, uh, to be a good piece of legislation, but at the end of the day is going to have fairly significant uh, consequences for everyone from the lowest income consumer all the way up the chain. And the reason for that is as much as this is a piece of legislation that's built around words like competition, interchange, savings, all those things, what it really is is a piece of legislation that will drive first less credit cards per capita around the country. So you will see access to credit decline because of the way this is going to change the cost structure to issue credit cards. And second, at the same time, even those credit cards that kind of weather the storm, the issuers who are able to still provide those cards, the ability to have rewards associated with those cards, the points that you and I use every single year to do things we want to do to extend our purchasing power, to get the kids a, uh, something at Christmas, a new toy, a uh, new video game, to do holiday travel with our family on airlines or go to some exotic destination, whether it's here in Missouri or otherwhere, that uh, you couldn't afford to do but your credit card points allow you to do, those points will disappear. And as much as the other side of this issue wants to talk about the importance of trying to create some savings opportunities, the reality is nothing is going to get passed through. There is no opportunity here for the consumer to save. Instead, you will pad the pockets of those entities that want to save on interchange fees while losing credit cards, and if you keep a credit card, losing credit card rewards. And in that scenario, no consumer here in Missouri or across the country comes away a winner. So what is, um, what is right now, because I know this has had uh, and it's been discussed for many, many months, but what exactly is in the legislation that's being considered in D.C.? Is it? Uh, I know it's capping, what, credit card annual mm-hmm. percentage rates. That's also on the table. Um, you're talking about some of the rewards points. What exactly is being considered right now? You know, there are a number of bills on this front that have to do with credit card activities. The one that uh, Senator Marshall introduced or co-sponsored with Senator Dick Durbin, a Democrat out of Illinois, yeah. uh, was the Credit Card Competition Act. And that's the one Senator Hawley signed on to. There's other pieces of legislation, including one from Senator Hawley several months ago, that would have capped credit card APR rates. And it's important to keep those two bills separated for a couple of reasons. The, the specific one dealing with, as you referenced, the two senators on either side of the state line here who uh, are targeting credit card competition, the, the word competition is the issue because what the bill does is require credit cards to be run on one of two possible networks. So if you carry a credit card, you probably have Visa, MasterCard, Amex, or Discover on your card, something like that. The boilerplate version of this bill is that if you've got Visa or MasterCard on that card, they want you to add another unaffiliated network, some smaller credit card uh, provider that a merchant can run the transaction across. So when you swipe your card, they can choose to run it across Jackson's fun, fun network of credit cards at a lower cost. Now, is my network as secure as Visa and MasterCard? Probably not. Have I ever run credit card transactions? No, I may have run debit card. It's a totally different kind of transaction, totally different network, totally different infrastructure. But the merchant's going to save money on that network, so they'll run it that way at your risk. And so what a Visa and MasterCard and any issuer using those cards have to do? They have to lower their prices to compete. And that means the ability to pay for rewards will start to go away. And it also means that smaller issuers out there, we have banks in Missouri that issue credit cards. This isn't just Bank of America and Wells Fargo and the largest banks in the country. We've got small community banks that are issuers. You start to erode all of the cost structure within that structure, you start to take away uh, their ability to choose the network and force them into other relationships. They're going to spread what they have to pay out. They can't stay in the business. They have to pull credit cards away from their consumers. So you are consolidating the credit card market even more. The reason credit card debt is high, you were spot on. It's a tie of high inflation, 
higher rates across the board for everybody. Uh, consumers are spending on credit and networks right now. That has nothing to do, as much as the other side wants to say, with this particular bill or this particular issue. If anything, the prevalence of credit card debt is proof that the market is hyper-competitive. People have a lot of credit cards. Imagine what happens if you consolidate down and there are only four available options to pull your credit card from. Now, what they'll say is because we've talked to Jackson, uh, Senator Marshall, about uh, this. And, sure. you know, what he'll say is I'm standing with Main Street and, um, you know, Visa and MasterCard are running a monopoly and they just increase swipe fees whenever they want. And anyone who's against me is doing the bidding of these big credit card companies. How would you respond to that critique from Roger Marshall when he says I'm standing with Main Street? It's interesting. Senator Marshall in particular has never responded to the comment that the Federal Reserve found that the last time interchange was capped back in 2008, 2009, the savings were not passed on to consumers. This is the Federal Reserve Bank itself finding that smaller merchants, Main Street America, all the way up to the real pushers of this, which are the largest merchants in the country, they didn't pass those savings along. So as much as we want to say this is an issue that's friendly, All it really does is pad the pockets of Home Depot, Walmart, these very, very large companies that have significant interchange. The average small business pays less than 2% on its credit cards. Inventory, rent, taxes, and look at taxes alone. That's where our time and effort is better spent if we want to help Main Street America. The interchange issue is incredibly small for your average small business compared to what it adds up to for your very, very large retailers and merchants out there who can benefit from the volume that they do versus the volume of a small business. Very interesting. Jackson Hadaway, president of the Missouri Bankers Association on KCMO. Uh, Thank you so much for being here, Jackson. This is uh, one that's going to be talked about now going forward for a while, I'm sure, and we'll be in touch on this and much more. We appreciate it. Thank you, Pete. Have a great day. All right. You as well, Jackson Hadaway on KCMO.